Hello, I'm going to talk about the flu incubation period, the vaccine, and some really cool nifty ideas someone can do to fight off this pesky annoying virus. Now down below in the YouTube description there's a link where I'm giving away a free video guide about shopping for dietary supplements that can really help in this process. Now say for example someone has the flu and coughs on you, which is not cool. What happens is the travel well, that's usually how someone gets the virus. Also, someone can touch something that has the virus and then do a bonehead move like touch your face, which you're not supposed to do because it's a weak link. So, the virus then will travel down your throat into your whole lung area and then it will invade a cell and take it over like an Al Qaeda terrorist taking over a plane. And then it will tell that cell to make a whole bunch of copies of itself, which it does. And that's how it spreads and grows. Now, according to the CDC, that's the Center, Center of Disease Control in the United States, that the flu incubation period is between one to four days. And this means as soon as you get coughed on by that not cool person, you have this long until symptoms will start to appear and you start getting sick with the cough, the runny nose, the headaches, the, the, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Now, see here. Oh, if you're wondering when someone is contagious, then the answer is one day before symptoms start to develop. This is according to the CDC, of course, when someone is coughing and sneezing, and uh, they're a lot more contagious because since the body is trying to expel the virus from their body. Now, the contagious period usually lasts around a week, five to seven days in a, a normal adult before the immune system will pretty much beat it into submission, eliminate the virus depending on how strong it is. It's also estimated that children are contagious twice as long as adults uh, simply because they have a weaker immune system, they haven't been exposed to all the viruses, and their body hasn't learned about all of them yet. So here's a question. Do you know how someone can tell the difference between the flu and the common cold? Well, a big reason is a high fever. High fever is in the flu and it's not normally seen with a cold. Another difference between the two is that the common cold symptoms will get gradually get worse, while the flu, the person can be all in the, be the best mood in the world, feeling like a million dollars, wants to walk on rainbows, let's see you know he feels like he's in the, like the worst place in hell because it just strikes all of a sudden, without a warning. Now, this virus actually infects more people during the cold winter months than in the summer. Do you know why? Well, there's a ton of theories on this, and one of them is that the flu virus is able to stay airborne longer when the air is dry and cold. Another possible reason is that the uh, dry air in the winter, which is annoying, it dries up everyone's skin, at least my skin, and dehydrates it, uh, it actually will lessen mucus in the no nose area, which may seem a good thing, right, because mucus is kind of gross and can, can be annoying. Um, but mucus is good for the immune system because what it does is it traps like viruses and harmful things that are jealous of you, want to get inside and do a bunch of damage, and will expel them. So they're helpful. That's another theory. Uh, okay, another theory would be, of course, people are indoors more often, so they're breathing on each other and, and passes the whole virus around. That's another idea. Also, perhaps someone is not getting enough vitamin D, which is what you're supposed to get from the sun, and vitamin D is great for your immune system, and it weakens it, and that is why people get more sick during the winter. That's another theory. And the last one I'm going to talk about has to do with air circulation, which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I don't know, it's a theory, so I'm just providing you the information. Now, also, there is something called a flu vaccine, uh, which you can get to protect yourself from the flu. Not everyone gets it because maybe they don't trust the vaccine. Maybe they're lazy or they don't want to do it. They don't have the money. Uh, perhaps they think they, they'll get the flu from the vaccine. They don't want, you know, they think there's some harmful stuff in there. Who knows? So what's your opinion on the flu vaccine? Do you get it every year? If not, why? Well, the truth is there are dead flu viruses in the vaccine, so you can't really get the flu from it in theory. Now, the worry that it can do more harm than good is actually a real concern because there can be a complication, and that's just the truth. Anytime you inject some foreign thing in your body, you're putting yourself at risk. 
Another bad thing with the flu vaccine is that, um, well, the flu virus in general can change very quickly, meaning you get the flu vaccine today and three days later the whole virus changes. Well, that vaccine is now completely useless against the virus because it has changed and has altered. And that can really happen. That's bad. It does cost money. <laughs> Who likes to spend money, right? Also, there's a 40% chance it could not work, and it could be higher, and that's according to the CDC. So, 50% chance, chance it could be useless as, as it is. So, uh, my whole thoughts on it is, well, if you're around a whole bunch of people all the time, especially if they're sick, well, yeah, definitely can be helpful, some pros and cons to it. If you have a weak immune system, you know, I mean, if you get the flu and you have a weak immune system, that's, that's not, that's trouble. For normal people, it's a judgment call. It's up to you. You know, my thoughts is I would really highly focus on just improving your immune system in general. That's going to help a lot. A lot of stuff. Great idea. Oh, and if you improve your immune system, there's no negative side effects, and it can be really inexpensive. Cool. The best way to do that, of course, is to wash your hands. Don't do a bonehead thing like touch your face with your fingers. Drink lots of water. Get your rest. Don't smoke and eat healthy and stuff that you've probably been preached to a lot already. I do highly recommend a good multivitamin simply because a lot of vitamins like vitamin D that if you're lacking in, it's, it's pretty much like opening up a back door to a psycho killer who can recreate himself and wants to hack up everybody in the, that he sees with a huge, large axe, <laughs> which is not good. For some reason, I, every time I think of a horror movie, I think of a big guy with a large axe. I don't know. Oh, and almost forgot. The psycho killer can recreate himself about a million times in a couple minutes, which is how the uh, how the influenza virus are born. They can actually recreate themselves that fast. There's also a ton of herbs that can do some amazing things to your whole immune system. Throw some ideas out there. Green tea, great with interferon, which interferes with the virus's ability to recreate itself. There's also something called olive leaf extract, a natural antibiotic. Oh, it doesn't kill the, the good bacteria in your system like the stuff they prescribe to you. Expensive stuff. So olive leaf is amazing. Plus, it promotes something called, uh, if I can pronounce this, phagocytosis. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, how it does is, sorry for the noise. I got, there's a lot, a lot of kids playing around here where I'm living. Oh, yeah. Back to what I was saying, phagocytosis is when a bunch of people, the, 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 uh, your immune cells, get around the virus and kill it. So it's great. So there's a whole lot more. If you are interested in herbs in general and supplements, which you should be because they're awesome, I do highly recommend you click on that link in the description and check out that free video guide. You have nothing to lose. And there's just a, a ton of value. And I had a ton of fun making it. So I, I think you're really going to like it. It helps with so many things about supplements. And there's a lot of crappy herbs out there that can that you should be aware of. I really appreciate your time. I hope this video helped a few people, and I, I can't believe it's eight minutes now. This video is just take, go on forever. I try to make them short, but it's not easy. Uh, thank you so much, and have a great day.